Wow. Stars above a certain mass, when they die, will go as supernova, and they'll leave behind a neutron star. Stars of even higher mass, we, we're not entirely certain of the, the boundary of this, but stars of a higher mass can go supernova and make a black hole. Stars of even higher mass, the supernova never gets out. Black hole all the way. So only in that last case is all the mass of the entire system part of the black hole. And the space-time curvature at the end was the same as it was in the beginning. Whereas the one where some gets blown out and others become a black hole, yeah, that black hole does not have the full gravity that the whole system had before because half of it got blown away. It's that simple. So he's right to think about this, but the answer is not that deep. That's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matthew Jury wrote, hello, everyone. Uh, how can a gravitational singularity exist if infinite curvature means infinite time? We do not have a good way to talk about the singularity. Would you say the jury is out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I would say is that's why we have string theorists. To bridge the gap between quantum physics and general relativity, one, the theory of the small, the other, the theory of the large. But at the beginning of the universe, the large was small. Whole universes were operating in the quantum realm. And I've seen Ant Man. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Okay. So, if that's the case, what's happening at the singularity? Because you don't get singularities in quantum physics, you get it in general relativity.